In this session, we're going to learn how to calculate location quotients to give us an idea of industrial employment specialization in your region of analysis. What we mean by industrial specialization is that we have an area or a part of your economy that is more competitive just by virtue of employment than would be the national average. So Iowa, for example, this is easy. Iowa is, has a competitive advantage in farming. We just have significantly more farmers when we look at the composition of our workforce than the national average would have. The same could be true for manufacturing. If you know anything about Iowa's economy, you know that manufacturing is very strong and that uh, we also have a competitive advantage in manufacturing. Well, we find a uh, measure of specialization. There are several measures, but one that we use is called the location quotient, and that's what we're going to look at today. It is simply the percentage of local jobs in an industry divided by that same percentage at the national level. So, for example, it would be Iowa's percentage of farmers divided by the national percentage of farmers, and that ratio tells us our location quotient. So here is the example that I've used in a previous uh, video. Iowa, let's say Iowa has 10% of its employment in an industry. And we're going to assume this is a major industry that, that is producing for export sales and, and that it's very, very important. So industry I, we have 10%. And the U.S. average is 2.5%. So the location quotient is simply Iowa's percent, 10%, divided by the national percent, 2.5% equals four. Now, that location quotient, a one would mean that we had the same percentage as the national average, which would mean that we didn't have a, any, any evidence of specialization. But a four means that we have four times more employment than the national average would have suggested in this industry. So this means that, as I just said, we have four times as many jobs and we are therefore specialized and therefore likely producing for export sales, meaning we have way more jobs in this industry than would be needed to simply satisfy local demand for the goods and services that were produced in industry I. If the location quotient is less than one, we're not self-sufficient. That means that uh, all things being equal, we have a comparative deficit in employment in that particular industry. If a location quotient is greater than one, and especially if it's over 1.25 or so, then we can start to conclude that we're producing for export. If we are producing for export, we can apportion the jobs in an industry between those that are producing for local demand and those that are producing for external markets, our export jobs. And the formula for that, very simply, is, is displayed on the screen. Export jobs are going to be 1 minus 1 over the location quotient times the jobs in the industry that we're studying. We'll work our way through a, a very simple example. If the location quotient is four and there, one, there are 1,000 jobs in industry I, then we do the formula, one minus one over the location quotient of four times the 1,000 jobs would yield 750 export or basic jobs, jobs producing for export or external markets. And, and this is important, 250 of those jobs are producing for local needs. I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate location quotients. And we're, I'm going to compare, this is some older data, but it's, it's set up appropriately for us to make a comparison. I'm going to compare the United States with Minnesota. And usually you use the United States as your foundation um, for determining specialization. But you could use, for example, the Midwest or the Plain States or some logical combination of, of an economy that is significantly larger than yours. And if I were calculating a location quotient for a particular county in Iowa, it would be perfectly okay to compare that county to the state's characteristics to find out whether the county has unique specialization qualities distinct from the state average. In this case, though, we're, we're only going to compare state uh, of Minnesota 
employment by very broad category. These are very, very broad industrial categories. And that's another thing that we pay attention to when we do location quotient analysis, especially when we're trying to estimate what I just talked about, the number of export jobs that might be associated with an industry. We normally don't, although I will, calculate export jobs with this high level of aggregation. Normally, what we would do is we would use highly disaggregated data, very, very finely disaggregated data to get an idea of the potential number of export jobs. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to do both. We're going to calculate Minnesota's location quotients by very broad category, and we'll go through the process of calculating the export jobs. So remember, the location quotient for any industry I is simply the percentage of jobs in that industry compared to the national average. We're going to divide farm employment in Minnesota by the total amount of employment in Minnesota. And I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of that too because I'm always going to be dividing by that uh, total. Now we're going to divide that entire uh, ratio by the same percentage at the national level, farm employment at the national level, divided by total employment at the national level. And again, I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of that. And I'm going to close that parentheses. And when I get an answer, it's going to be 1.71. Remember, a location quotient in excess of 1 indicates specialization. So with regard to farm employment, relative to total employment and relative to the same percentage at the national level, Minnesota is specialized in farm employment. We can just copy this formula down to the bottom and we can look at the industries where it is obvious Minnesota has a comparative advantage. It has a minor comparative advantage in utilities. It has a more uh, a moderate advantage in manufacturing. Uh, in wholesale trade, which may be linked, by the way, to farming and manufacturing, because both of those industries are heavily dependent on both specialized and, and uh, widely distributed wholesale systems. They have uh, demonstrated a specialization in finance and insurance, that's banking, banking and insurance companies. They have a specialization in the management of companies and enterprises. This usually means that they have some headquarters in that state that are important. There's Cargill, there's Pillsbury, 3M. So they have some major corporations in Minnesota. So that, that, that shows that they're specialized in that. Healthcare and social assistance, we would expect that. Minnesota is where the Mayo Clinic is. It's one of the nation's premier institutions for healthcare delivery and it provides healthcare all across to people all across the world and perhaps a minor specialization in arts, entertainment, and recreation. So we see that the, the, the areas in Minnesota that have specialization and those categories that are less than one, they don't have specialization. For the most part, though, in areas where they don't have any kind of competitive advantage, it's not that much lower than one. Now I'm going to go through the process of estimating the export jobs. If you remember the formula on the previous page, the export jobs are going to be 1 minus 1 over the location quotient times the number of jobs in that industry. So I'm going to do this, but I'm going to put a conditional on this first because I'm only going to calculate the export jobs if the value in the Minnesota location quotient column is greater than 1. So we're going to start a, a formula with an equal sign and say if this value is greater than 1.0, then do this formula. 1 minus 1 over the location quotient times the amount of employment in that industry. And I have to put one more parentheses and then hit enter. So what that says is that 41,000 of the jobs in Minnesota are producing for export sales and the difference between 99,000 and 41,000, I'll do that right here, I'll just subtract these two. 58,000, the equivalent of 58,567 are producing 
for Minnesota demand. These jobs are producing for export. These jobs are required to satisfy the Minnesota population. Now we can copy this formula down and what it's going to do, let me amend this formula. I'm going to tell it to do that answer and that if the value isn't greater than one, I want it to put a zero in there. So we'll do that. Okay. And I will copy this down. And what we'll get are blank or zeros for those, those industries with a location quotient less than one and a positive value, of course, for industries with a location quotient greater than one. If we, and, this, and if we were looking at a very highly detailed list of industries, we could sum all of these export jobs and compare that total of export jobs to the total employment in the state or the entity that we're studying to come up with a basic jobs multiplier. But here's a caution. We do not calculate a multiplier at this level of aggregation. We need much higher disaggregation to come up with an estimate of what truly constitutes, in this case, Minnesota's export employment.